Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, and we are at your side virtually. Brand Ambassador here, and guess what we have today? We have an entire lineup of brother educators that are going to share organizing tips. And actually, I got a little sneak preview. You don't want to miss this. See you in a second. All right, so I hope you have your pen and pencil ready because you do not want to miss this. We are live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting, Facebook and YouTube channels. We can see your comments. You'll be able to ask questions and wait till you see this party. So let's bring the team up here. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Brother educators, Barbara, Tina, Jane, Sarah, Colleen, and all of them are going to take you into their sewing room and give you tips for how to everything from embroidery files to bobbins to stabilizer to we get to see Colleen's whole entire room. This is going to be so much fun. So say hi, say where you're from and happy new year. We are so happy to have you another year of at your side virtually. So ladies, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. So as we are here, if you missed the shows in December, Barbara Jones was on and she showed the quilt that you might recognize a very similar one that's behind Jane, another similar one behind Tina. My goodness gracious. I should <laughs> have hung mine up. <laughs> yes, yours is beautiful too behind you. Thanks. So everyone pop in. I think that, I don't know about you, but in January is the organizing month. It's like the lists come out. I don't ever accomplish all of them. I just realized that last month <laughs> when I'm going through, but the lists come out of organizing and things like that. and. I don't know. There's so many tricks that everyone has. And every year I pick up a new one from one of you. So I'm very excited for this show. I have my pen and paper ready. So I'm ready for some tips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why don't we start with Colleen? Colleen's going to show us around her entire sewing room. So you want to take us on a tour? Sure. Sure. We're going to see some pretty interesting uh, different. Let's just say that I'm the economical one in the crowd. So when it comes to um, I'm trying to find the right camera to use here for you. Let's see if that's better. Okay, so nope, that's not better. I'm going to go to this one. So this is the center of my room, which probably looks like a huge mess to you. But are you, you're you not seeing what I'm trying to show you. So I'm kind of um, baffled at that. We're just seeing you. You look very well, no. tall. And you actually should not be seeing me. You actually should be seeing my uh, camera. So I'm not quite sure why you're not. But hmm. I'm tip this camera point here because seeing nope we just see you on the whatever front camera you have. That's actually on my computer which you shouldn't be seeing at all. So uh, we'll start, we'll move all move around Colleen, but I'll take you out for a second. But when you go into here, click on camera and see if there's a different, if you're using webcam or if you need to switch to your black, you know, the little box. The, black, the black magic one. Yeah. yeah no representative brother, but that's just a brand that we're using. Right. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll take Colleen out for a minute. She's going to play with that. And I, when I see you, I'll give you a thumbs up to bring you back in. All right, so we have more. <laughs> that was a good organizing. But her room, I'm so excited for that. So as soon as we see her, but why don't, Tina, you had a lot of organizing tips and it was kind of a little bit of everything that people are gonna, why don't you take it away for a minute? Sure, I would love to. Um, so basically I have a few organizing principles and if you, if you spent time with me, you know I changed my mind and reorganize about every three months anyway. But, <laughs> Common tips are the things that I use all the time, I try and keep immediately at hand. So things like bobbins or buy my machines, that kind of thing. I'm a big labeler and I love my my uh, labeling system. So as I show you different things around my sewing studio, you can see labels because again, if I haven't remembered where I put something, the label will, will keep me straight. And then, you know, I have, I'm blessed with a fairly large room, um, but, but I try and use all my vertical space as well because, you know, there's a lot of room from floor to ceiling that doesn't take up a lot of floor space. 
So let's go ahead and I'm going to start with my vertical storage. So I have tons of hoops and things. And so here's a here's my pegboard system. And so for you know the multi noodles, we have all kinds of accessories. And this makes it easy for me to find whatever I'm looking for. It just takes a second to find anything. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I may have a fabric problem. So fabric storage. Um, I and the other thing that I do, you'll notice as I show you things in my studio, I have a lot of closed door storage because that eliminates the visual clutter for me. It's it can be really bad behind the doors, but I don't have to see it all the time. <laughs> so I have rolling fabric storage cabinets. And let's take a peek inside so you can see how I organize my fabric. So I um, sort out my fabric. I've got my quilt backings and then everything else is organized by colorway. They're in clear containers and then they're labeled. So when I'm working on a project, I can just grab the colorway that I need, pull out the fabric and then pop it right back into that, that cabinet. So that works really well for me. I've tried lots of different things and I'm real happy with this particular setup. Now, the next thing that ends up being challenging sometimes is thread. And so um, I actually use, the, they're in the scrapbooking section of the big box crafting stores. So I use those containers for my thread. Um, I, thread's kind of heavy though, so my towers were leaning. So my husband built this little wooden cube around my little plastic storage bin, and it works great. It's on wheels, I can move it all around the room. I've got, again, my thread is sorted by colorway, and then my specialty threads like the metallics and the 60 weights are also in their own containers. So it's really quick for me to go in and grab threads when I'm working on a project. And then, you know, if you look inside of the bin, that's kind of what it looks like. So it just makes it quick and easy. I used to hang them on the wall, but they got dusty and I had some problems with them fading in the sunlight. So I'm actually really happy with the stuff now. I love that, Tina. I love that. And you know, you're so right. Sometimes when they're on the wall, it's like, well, <laughs> I'm always using my can of air to spray everything off. So much better. Yeah, so that works for me. Stabilizers, again, you know, we do a lot of embroidery projects and we got tons of stabilizer. So I just made a really quick um, little containment system for the stabilizer. So the houndstooth fabric is an upholstery weight fabric. I got medium weight clear vinyl at the fabric store and made a series of loops. And then I just have bias tape across the top just to kind of keep it neat. And of course, they're all labeled. And here's a, a closer view. You can see I, can, I know exactly what my stabilizer is. And then the side view, in case you can't tell, there's the loop. So literally when I'm hooping, I just reach into the appropriate loop, pull out the stabilizer I need, cut it, and pop it right back in there. And that way I'm not walking all over the place trying to find my, find my stabilizer. That's so, amazing. I love that. Tina, you're going to have to come back and show us how to make that. That is really fun. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy. It's probably an hour project. So, um, yeah, I've been real happy with that. I've had that for quite some time. You know, I don't know about the rest of you, but my cutting table is kind of mission central for me in my sewing room. So I actually, um, my sewing room, the previous owners of our house had it as a woodworking studio. So that kind of introduced to me the idea of using the kind of the tool kind of cabinets. And so I, they slide right up under my cutting table. Um, all my rotary cutters are in the little um, storage thing on top. And I mean, I organize projects there. I hoop things there. I cut out my fabric. It really works well. And you'll see again, the closed cabinet storage behind. I try and I try not to look at my clutter anymore than I have to. Uh, and again, everything's on wheels. So I, you know, I have, I, sometimes it's just me. Sometimes I have as many as three other people in here. So I have to be able to reconfigure my space pretty easily. So my whole studio is on wheels. And then of course I do a lot of vinyl with the scan and cut. So this is how I have my heat press area set up. Um, heat presses on top and then all my adhesive and my heat transfer vinyls are in that big husky cabinet on the left and on the right I have things like my pattern the marking tools and notions and all the manuals for my machines so and my you know snap setters all that kind of stuff so everything has a place the labels again kind of keep me from forgetting where I put stuff so I, I am a big fan of labeling and then one of my favorite things and I just figured this out maybe a year ago is you know, I was always using my iron and I had to drag my ironing board and my iron all over the room and I felt like I was wasting a bunch of time. So I just got one of these little three tiered rolly bins from like the craft store. My iron's on top. I've got my fusible tapes in the middle and on my dressmakers ham and, and pressing cloths and stuff on the bottom. So now I can just put one of those pressing mats on a table if I want it. If I'm doing a quilting project, roll my iron over and that portable iron thing has been awesome for me. I love that. Okay. 
that hands down is one of my favorites. By the way, I have like those carts all over my studio. I use them for my cameras. I use them for all oh, my dyed fabric or, you know, my little dyes all go into one. Those carts are like the best ever, but I never thought of doing an ironing section. Yeah, that's the next level. It's, it's, it's really handy. It, I'd really recommend you guys trying it. And then last up is organizing projects. So I'm guessing everybody on the call is like me. I find something beautiful, I buy it. It might be six months or two years before I get around to doing the project. And by then I can't find all the bits and pieces, right? So I just bought these little inexpensive little, little um, I don't I guess you call it a little, I don't know, storage container. And as I buy things for the project, I put them in the bins. When it's time to do it, I just pull out the bins. So let's take a peek inside one of those. So when I'm ready to do this quilt someday, there's all my fabrics, there's my pattern. All I have to do is add batting to it and I'm ready to go. And that has saved me, I just can't tell you how much time and stress. I'm not running around looking for stuff at the last second. <laughs> that's a great idea. So that, that's how I try and keep myself together and, and sane and productive. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's saying they love these ideas love these ideas i don't know which one's my favorite the stabilizer would have to be with that ironing station or my two favorites i love them all though but those two are like the whoa what a brilliant idea <laughs> thanks all right let's see if we got colleen back every uh, there's some comments for you too tina on here that i'll bring up so colleen are you uh back to the party I am not. I can just I can move around the room with my computer, but I can't get my cameras online, which is awesome. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. That's because we're live. It'll work as soon as we're not live. <laughs> well, it, exactly. But it'll also work as soon as my techno husband comes home to help me figure out what I did wrong setting up this morning. <laughs> but so do you want to skip me or do you want me to just jump in and move around the room with my camera, my computer? It's totally up to you. Do you want to try it? Um, we can take you out so we don't make everyone sick or I can leave you. We'll keep going through and then maybe by the end, the cameras will work. Yeah. Keep going through and, and somewhere or somehow he'll come home and then I'll be able, he'll do it in 10 seconds. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. Tina, by the way, everybody up here is saying, oh my gosh, they love, <laughs> they love what you're showing. They love, you must come back and show how to do that stabilizer hanger. That's very okay. cool. <laughs> I'd love to. I guess we know what your project will be next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barbara, uh, many of us love to embroider and I'm very intrigued how you organize all your embroidery files because mine are a hot mess. Mm -hmm. hot mess. So give us some tips for that. Okay. So uh, I think I've been embroidering since 92 uh, and over the years, I'm sure everybody has numerous amounts of embroidery designs that we buy at one time or another and think, oh, that looks good on a jacket and then never get to use it. And then when you go to find it, you really can't <laughs> because it's either on an older computer, it's on, let's just show you one of the sticks, one, one of my group of sticks here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's just one. I have more over here. I have more here. So, you know, after you figure 92 to 2022, that's a long time of collecting de uh, designs. So I finally got smart about it and started to use a more conventional method, which is a an external hard drive. Does a couple things. Number one, they're all in one place. Number two, if something goes wrong with your computer, and I just was on the phone with a friend of mine uh, yesterday who bought a brand new computer, top of the line, two trillibyte, whatever, insider computer, and the solid state hard drive went bad. Oh. She's lost everything. Everything. Oh. So, I mean, yes, I'm, I'm a little obsessive about designs. I'm also a little obsessive about double and triple backup. All right. I have had hard drives, uh, external hard drives go bad. So um, that's, I'm, I'm a little, I got a lot of designs, you know, and 
I don't want to lose any of them. So. so I love this idea. And I love what you just said that you have two, maybe three backups because mm -hmm. those drives do go bad. So do the yeah, USB do. sticks. And so sometimes if you have them in different locations, at least you're saved. But I love right. that you have them on one of those drives because you could plug it into any laptop. Anything. Any anything. And what I've done with the latest one is I've made sure that the um, it's duplicate to what I have at home and then I can travel with it. So, you know, when I'm bored in the, the uh, hotel rooms, when I'm traveling and, and teaching, I can further organize my designs. And what I actually do is every time I download a design from a particular um, vendor, mm -hmm. I make sure that I have a folder for that vendor and I put all of the designs into that folder. So if I'm looking for something from, um, you know, wh whoever I bought it from, I know that it's going to be inside her or his folder. So it, it takes a little bit of time to organize, um, but it's certainly better than the mess I have here. <laughs> and I'm sure this is not all. I mean, you know, so, but it's, I, um, you know, it's, it's my way of keeping things straight and safe. I so. would love to know from everybody watching how many have a stash like that. Probably not so <laughs> large, but that's how all mine are too, but they're all over. So you're, I can't even find, and I have been looking and looking and you're not only through time. I thought it was maybe on an old machine. Yes. I'm looking for my logo that I had digitized. I can't find it anywhere. It's probably yep. on one of my gazillion sticks that you have there. Well, it's, it's funny that you should say that because I pulled up the file that has the brother logo on it. So there you go. That's, I know exactly where my brother logos are. So oh it's, my gosh. it's fun. And when, when uh, Kim finally, you know, when she gave me this assignment, I was driving and I'm thinking to myself, what in God's name can I show that's organized? I, I work in organized chaos. I'm not as new as Tina. I mean, I do have fabric bins and I do have um, different areas, but I, no, <laughs> no, this is about as neat as it gets right here. So, <laughs> Hey, we all have our own organized chaos. That's correct. I yes. I do want that triple tier. So that's, that's because my ironing board turns into a work table light and I have to clear it when I go to iron. <laughs> I like that little, and it has wheels. Hey, so, yeah. uh, Brenda wants to know, so how do you know what's on each stick then? Well, that was the challenge when I went to find something. I have to plug in the stick and take it out, plug it in, find it. So when I did the um, the hard drives, I just pull up the listing of the hard on the hard drive, and it's easier. I don't have to keep putting in, you know, the USB stick in and out. So I did sit, and again, that was my hotel project. I did sit in my hotels and copy every stick to my hard drive. That had to take some time. Now, a uh, question. It did. Can the machines, can you actually plug that into the machine and no. take, you have to put it still on a USB stick? But at yes. Least you know um, it, yeah. It, the machine will take, I think I put, don't quote me on this, but a, a 64 gig in and it takes some time to get up. It It's going through all of the um, files. So you really don't want to put a big, USB stick in or a hard drive like that because the machine is trying to make a picture or or organize and bring up all of your files together and it can't handle it. So I stick with my my 36 or 32 rather or even a little um, less doesn't matter. It's just a transfer thing. So I go from my computer or I send it from the hard drive um, wirelessly to my uh, machine. Brilliant. Brilliant. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to work on that because that was one thing I, for uh, over New Year's, I always try to get organized. And do you know, mine aren't even on nice hangers like that. I have like bags and bags and bags and I never well, find the, them. Yeah, the third bag has all the ones that don't have little hangers on them. You know, they're all the ones that are loose in there. Yeah. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So now we are going, we've got our sewing room. We're getting organized. We've got our embroidery files. Colleen is still, let's see if we are. How you doing, Colleen? Hers is not. She's still muted. <clears throat> All right, so she, oh, is she coming back? We're still going to get a sewing room tour. 
she moves her laptop all the way around? Or how <laughs> You're going to see your room, Charlie. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take her out for a Okay, I, I muted me so I wouldn't make any noise, but I, I did clean my room up so that you can actually see carpet. And um, my tech guy is on his way to help. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just keep rolling. And then Colleen will be the last reveal. <laughs> Grab a good cup of coffee. We don't want to be here for like three hours. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> Cheers. So, Jane, uh, you have some organizing tips as well. I do. I do. Okay. So, um, I love this idea that was given to me by a dear friend. And this is a pin cushion. And you can do these as gifts too, right? So, you can uh, monogram them and give them as gifts. But what the purpose of this would be is to if you're um embroidering away and you want to say um fix a pair of jeans well you're gonna take out your size 11 and put in maybe a 14 or a 16. so just pop in your 11 or your 12 and put it in that spot fix your jeans up take that one out put it back in the um the container and then pull the one that you used you know this this is just basically for um, lightly used needles. If you're not gonna, if you start sewing on an embroidery project, I highly recommend just replace the needle. You'll be so much happier with the results of your embroidery. But this was uh, created in my design center. You can um, go into as much detail as you want. You can add a uh, ballpoint or, uh, <laughs> uh universal or whatever type of needles that you may uh use you can add that to it if you want this is a little design that was built into the luminaire and the whole thing um was created in my design center so it's an in the hoop project very quick and and then you can gift them as well so there's one so all right that's not cushion for anything it could be for needles it could be any type of pin cushion Certainly. And you can put just regular pins in there if you want. Have a little spot for that. Sure. It can be anything. All right. So another thing, this is one that I have used for years. All right. Go to your store and purchase um, just the seasonal, like after Christmas. These are after Christmas ones. Purchase them very inexpensively. It is a uh, tablecloth. Now, the top side is plastic. The bottom side has flannel. So what you're going to want to do is for small spaces or if you're traveling to a quilt retreat or, or whatever, you're working on a quilt, you don't have a design wall. <clears throat> so um, And so this is like a... Um, a travel project or just if you have a small space lay out your quilt on the bed or whatever onto this tablecloth design it put your blocks as you like it and then you can roll it up and then you can bring it to your machine so then you can start as you're working on each row you can unroll it and roll it from the bottom and work on it row per row right so, but with it being plastic on one side, then it doesn't, your blocks aren't going to stick to it, if that makes sense, right? You have your flannel and your plastic and you're rolling it, and then you just unroll it as you get to the area where you're working on that quilt. So you can lay it on your bed, lay it on the floor, roll it up, keep it next to the machine, take it on a quilt retreat. It's nice and portable. So if you have just a few minutes that you have to work on your quilt, just grab it unroll it to that spot so a few blocks and you're all set oh my gosh that's a great idea yeah that's great. yeah it really comes in handy um here's another one is these little folders and you can just organize your vinyl pieces scraps because it's contained they're not going to slip out the side of a folder and then because the scanning cut scans you can keep all your tiny pieces 
into an organized folder. And then when you're looking for a small piece for a project, you can just go in. You can organize it by color or you can organize it by lights, darks, uh, heat transfer vinyl. So just have all your little pieces in one area that you can easily grab. That's a good idea. Because, you know, don't they have a little area at the top where you can like put labels, like maybe? Yes. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So heat transfer. You can label it vinyl. Uh, heat transfer uh, vinyl. Uh, however, uh, that you like. Um, okay. So here's another one. This really isn't necessarily for the sewing room, but if you're traveling, what I like to do is. Um, if you do any type of hand work, then I take the spool and if I'm working, if I think I'm going to use a lot of that color, I'll put the whole spool in there. But if I just need a little bit for that project, then I wind it onto a bobbin. Then so it doesn't uh, unravel and I have a little thread mess, I take these little tiny baby scrunchies <laughs> and I just pop it over there. It holds the, the thread without it coming out. And then I put it into um, my container. So I have little uh, small bobbins with the thread that I use the least or for that project, right? So I have all my threads for a project right in this little container. I can take it on the plane with me. I have my little fold up scissors. Um, I have beeswax and needle threader. I have all my little goodies so that when I'm traveling or in the car and I or going to a say a, an appointment and I'm going to be waiting, I can have this little project ready to, to grab and can do some handwork wherever I am. Oh, Jay, oh, that's a good idea. Okay. So another is you can purchase, and you can't really see it because it's clear, but you can purchase vinyl by the yard. And then I just cut it in these little strips, right? And then I wrap it onto a spool. This monofilament is very slick. So <laughs> that's right. I'll, so what I do is I take the, that clear vinyl, wrap it around, and it helps to keep the thread on it because it doesn't have a spot where you can hook it in, right? So it's just, it just has a mind of its own and goes crazy. <laughs> So just uh, put a little clear vinyl on there and you can buy, you know, a quarter yard of it and you'll have like lots of little strips, right, that you can put on your your threads. So it kind of keeps them contained, even the if um, one of your spools broke, right, and it no longer has the the bottom that holds your your thread in your thread end, then you can do that as well for that. That's tough. so. Is that vinyl, oh, sorry about the echo. Does that vinyl then, does it actually just stick to itself when it wraps around? Yeah, it sticks to itself. So as you use the, um, the your thread, you know, you take it off, tighten it up, and you're good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then the other one, and, and probably there's a lot of people out there that do this already. But for those um, new embroiderers, I the, as soon as I get thread i like to number it so oh. if the color comes off the bottom my little um, paper if it comes off the bottom then i have the number and also i just keep it on uh, the holder like that so i can see the color on the end so if i'm looking for a particular color it's easy to see that number as i'm looking Right. I don't have to pull them off, kind of look on the bottom and read the bottom. I just look at the number on the top that I've marked. You could also write, you know, what brand you're using or whatever details that you want on it. The size of your um, the thread, 60, 40 weight, you know, but I just put the number on there and that helps make things go a little bit faster when I'm grabbing threads for a for a embroidery project. Jane, that's a great idea. I got a quick question I'm going to bring up here um, that uh, 
I'm just going to have you answer real quick. Uh, is the quilt, when you go going back to your tablecloth, is the quilt laid on the flannel side or the other side? The quilt would be laid on the flannel side. And that holds it in place on the flannel side. And then when you're, as you're rolling it up, the plastic side wouldn't um, stick to it. So when you're unrolling it to work on it, it the plastic side doesn't stick to the, the blocks, if that's making sense. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. So then as you're working on it, of course, it gets smaller. You can get different size ones. So if you're working on, say, a baby quilt where you're not going to need um, the same size uh, tablecloth for that project as you would for, you know, like a queen size or a twin size, right? And that, that's right because you can take it to your machine and unroll it as you go. I use that quilt as my wool but i have to take them off as i sew and then i lose where i am across the rows or down the rows um i think that's a great idea it is and also do, what what gauge vinyl did you use on that patricia wants to know this is a 12 gauge is what i've used but um if you have a project and you have and if you have some on hand it'll stick to itself and then, because I don't think the gauge really matters as long as, you know, maybe you have some on hand that you can just use too. So that's quite, oops. sorry, Tina. So, so uh, last, this week on the show, I showed how to make a cover for a book and I had all these little pieces of that vinyl. I just threw it in the trash. I'm going to, I'm going, going into the trash to dig. <laughs> it's coming back out. You're diving now. <laughs> Dumpster diving. Colleen, yeah. I think we see you. Yes. Yay. I've got to un Yes, tech support came. I'm back. Hooray. <laughs> tech support. Good job. So before we go to Sarah, let's go to Colleen and check out this sewing room of yours. Okay. Now you have to give time for tech support to get out of the room. And I'm going to walk over here to a camera and then just move you all around the room as we go. My room is going to be the room that you do economically. So mine's about how to set up a room and how to do it pretty economically. So I'm going to start some of the things you've already seen. So I'm going to start right here with the center. And you can see the, you can see text. <laughs> So I had everything plugged in, but not on the right side of the computer. Who knew that would make a difference? So this is the Island, and my center island is uh, from a big box store. And I have it set up. Oh, I'll move my computer out of the way. Sorry about that. You can only imagine the terror I felt when this didn't work. So um, there's my cutting station. So it's my cutting and everything station. And my room is just built in a circle around the cutting station. And you'll understand why in a minute. Everything was done to um, be efficient and ready to grab. And one of my tricks that I'm gonna tell you is about keeping your room clean because, I'm gonna switch cameras, there we go. When I used to have very, very tiny amounts of time to sew, I found that if I would walk past my sewing room and it was clean with a part of a project sitting out, I would run in and sew for an hour before those teenage boys came home from school. So that's a big tip for me is to just keep everything uh, kind of as organized as you can. So there's a machine. We're going to walk over here to the next machine. And I want you to see this is really that is for pieces three separate pieces with the lid on top is to make it easy to move. So in my case, my husband built the cabinet, but you could just as easily purchase two matching, um, like little folding cat, you know, the kind that you can buy at any wholesale furniture store and use those as your two bases and then uh, get a, a top for it. And then you have your own sewing cabinet that fits your height and size for what you need. So that's what I did, and that's been great for moving. My sewing room is in a standard bedroom in a standard house, 
And that's to accommodate the fact that we used to move a fair amount with the military. And so you have to uh, just to be ready to pick up and go. So I do have, lucky me, I have two closets. So these are both good sized closets. They're not walk-in, but they are good sized. And then in the middle, yes. Colleen, before you go any further, Donna wants to know, what was that cushion on your chair? We were like all spying that cushion on your chair. Oh, those are from a local big box store. And they're uh, just to boost you up to be more comfortable when you're in a car or in your sewing room. Perfect. So your local big box store might have them periodically. You can probably get them at any office supply store. But I live really close to a big box store, so lots of my stuff comes from there. Uh, then uh, my next big thing to share is I have most of my stuff organized in just a standard chest of drawers. Again, I need to be ready to move and I need it to be handy, uh, but not to have clutter. So the top drawer is the stuff I need immediately. The second drawer, I'm not going to open the drawers because you don't want to see what's, how that looks. The second drawer is all of the things that go to scan and cut that I can't keep in the scan and cut desk. And then the third drawer is my Disney fabric and it's full to overflowing. But it makes it really easy because I could actually pull out a drawer if I needed to. So it's really a handy way. And then to move, of course, is just grab it and go. One of my major hints is to always put your machine where you want it first and then do everything else around it because your machine is the star of the show. Uh, so then this is the next. There's the other closet. So there's plenty of closet space, but never enough for a true sewer. And then here is my scan and cut. And my scan and cut stays up all the time. It needs to always be ready to go to work because I use it a lot. Um, you can see my vinyl water bottle. Everything that travels with me has vinyl labeling on it so that I'm at a, at a show or someplace I know that it's actually mine and not someone else and someone else doesn't pick it up. I do a tremendous amount of vinyl um, on things like that. I also love my scan and cut for quick gifts. I know a couple of years ago we did one with the little PE design key holder and there's just a lot of little fun things that you can do with it that make amazing gifts and um, to me I don't think I could live without scan and cut. It, it needs to be in here. Uh, not just for my quilting pieces because I do love it for that. Uh, in fact I had a customer at a show one day start to cry when I showed her how she could cut out all the leaves for the a tree of life quilt and it has 42 different leaves and when i showed her how she could cut them on her scanning cut and cut multiples at a time i really thought she was going to cry so this is my ironing board and it's a tall one and it has a cover on it and the reason that it has a cover on it is because i have a cat and i don't my cat loves to sit on the ironing board and help me sew but i don't <laughs> want to put my hair on any of my projects so when it's covered she gets on it and sits and supervises all the sewing and then i just flip off the cover and it is an embroidered cover so that i know the embroidery side is the right side up it doesn't have to be as elaborate as it could certainly just be a sheet but i don't want any cat hair on my projects that i'm taking to the show in case uh, someone can't handle cat hair and down here on the floor my has to sit on the floor because it's so heavy I noticed Tina had hers up, and that would make a lot more sense, but I have my little heat presses right there on the floor, handy to grab, um, and yes, I do sit on the floor to use it. And then I have blackout drapes, and the reason that I have blackout drapes is because one day I was going to do an evening class, and I didn't know, I've never done an evening class before, so I didn't know that the sun would come steaming in there and blind everybody. So we were tearing through the house like wild people, covering the windows with blankets. Everything was fine. So uh, I went out and bought these. Again, they're very, very, very economical at a big box store. They do provide insulation also. Uh, but the reason they're in this room is because this space is rest and you get cold evening sun, which we just fry you. And then we're going to come around again to my favorite, my flip stands, and my uh, another chest of drawers. And this is easy to move, easy to, to get wherever you want, easy to keep organized. A drawer has a specific assignment. And now I'm going to try to duck under my camera and not walk your view as I change positions, but I didn't do a very good job. 
And then this is another machine scan. And I'm gonna slide it down so you can see what it is. I apologize for the red duct tape, but I forgot it was there. So this is a desk from a reclaimed uh, furniture store. And the plastic things were sold. It's an old school desk is what it is. It's an old teacher's desk. And it's great because it's got nice, really, really deep drawers. And I don't know that I can get a picture of the depth of it, but it, it's really, I mean, you can be quilting and that is the equivalent of an ironing board and a half for width behind it. And again, it's very, very easy to move. So my room is based on what we can move and be ready to do. Um, shuffle things around. And the place I think where I started with you was on the PR and the uh, Luminaire. And those two machines just to stay where they are. And the other machines kind of switch around. Um, no, I started with you on my cutting table because my cutting table is squarely in the middle. And I have space tucked underneath that I have boxes. My stabilizer is uh, vertical in boxes so I can just look in and glance. I think I like Tina's drawers more, so I'm going to be out looking for a set of drawers that fit under this particular four by two and a half foot cheap table. And mine is on booster feet. If you know what booster feet are for your table, I'm tall, and I don't want to get a kink in my back when I stand over for cutting. So I'm going to just twist this around again so you can see the cutting table. I hope I don't make you see sick. <laughs> I did make you see sick, but let me just, there we go. I, the room is set up differently than normal to accommodate clean spaces. No. Um, so this actually has booster feet on it. And uh, Do you know what I'm talking about when I say booster feet? Mm -hmm. Are you talking about those little things that go underneath that then you can move stuff around? They're like little plastic things? Yes. Yeah. I they have look, those. They look kind of like an, uh, an advanced butter tub, but of course a butter tub would never hold the table with everything I have on it. But it does, um, they do a marvelous job and it makes it the right height for me, but that right height now gives me, and that's why I store everything underneath there, but that height now makes it so that I could be fine. And my so, was just the drawers under there. Colleen, there's just a couple questions for you. Betty, she's not seen that scan and cut that you had there, that's a new one. And um, she wants to know what kind of cut that is. Okay, let's switch back to the other camera so you can get a closer look at it. And I'm gonna just pop in front here. I did not set my room up very well this time, I'm sorry. Oh, it's great. Okay, let's just twist right around here to where you can see her. Yes, she is very beautiful. And isn't she gorgeous? She has a lot of new tricks to her. Um, of course, they're going to do that. They're going to add new tricks when they bring one out. And this one was going out this year. And so she has the same cutting. And unless she's a she, it's because she's perfect. Um, but she has the same cutting feel. She just has more features on her. And she speaks in a very quiet voice using Wi-Fi to your machine in that. So she can talk to the luminaire. If you have a design that you wanted to do an applique for, you can actually just send that to the um, you can send it from the Luminary machine and it will turn it into an applique file, cut it for you, and then those pieces will fit perfectly on the design of your Luminary. So Love that. And while you're there, that brother, Matt, you have there, uh, yes. somebody wants to know, is that available that they can buy somewhere? I know of a brother dealer that carries those. There might be more. You could private message me on that, but I don't know, Colleen, if you have any suggestions. Does brother sell that on their site, do you know? I do not know. So, I got Marilyn, it. if you send me a message, I can send you a link to where I know that you can find them. Yeah, they're very fun and they're very, very good mats. They're non-skid mm -hmm. and about oh, three-eighths of an inch thick foam. So they're sound deafening and slip proof and very nice mats. We'll enjoy it. Any other questions? Let me see no, what and your room is amazing. Everybody's saying uh, awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, Arlen Nell said she has too much stuff. So I think Anne on here, she said, I want to know how many of you cleaned your sewing rooms before this. <laughs> no, I did. Mm -hmm. I but I did. No. <laughs> of course I did. 
And I will say that I do try to keep it very tidy because that's what invites me in. And it, um, but you'll see, you'll see clutter. Definitely. Uh, from here, here up, this is what I cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, I don't know if you've seen these. Let me see if I can put this where you can see it. Sharon, it's the SDX 330D. I just had to double check that. All right, yes. let's see. I'm sorry, I could have told you that. I could have read it for you. Ooh, I put this down too low. I'm going to put it on top so you can see it better. Ooh. So that is a coffee cup. Doesn't look like it, but it's a coffee cup with a thing around it that I bought at a tool store. And the thing wraps around and ties so there's enough to fold inside to keep it stable. And then it has little pockets all around the outside for everything. So there's one of these by each of my machines, and yes, I have duplicates and stuff because it makes it easier to grab. But you can see I hold, nope, I'm too tall. You can see I hold the little pockets. And then I have the scissors and the sharp things I need to keep separated like in a little pocket. But the, the brush that you need for cleaning, all those little things are just right there handy to grab. And this one it has a handle or something. What is this? coffee mug. You can take it anywhere you want. Uh, because I'm too lazy, I have three of them. But it's always got everything I need. And that way, my sewing time is not interrupted. Like I said, I used to have a really finite amount of sewing time because with two teenage boys in the house, you don't get to do a whole lot. <laughs> That's, I, I'm watching the show and I'm making the list. I can tell you exactly what each one of you girls are going to be showing on this show <laughs> coming up from organizing. I love that mug too, Colleen. Thank you. It's, it's an easy project if someone wanted to make one. And those are actually purchased. But they could be made. But they could be made. And they are you have to agree with Colleen on, um, you have to have the, your cutting table at the right height for you so it just doesn't uh, kill your back because sometimes you're there for quite a while. And um, I purchased a one of those rolly kitchen centers that was on uh, one of those secondhand websites and I purchased that. It's the right height for me to cut. So, and it has the drawers and everything. You can put your tools and cutting tools in there, but that's the right height for me. For that's a good idea. I have somebody on here saying they use uh, uh, bed risers too to get it oh, the right yeah. height. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. All right. While we're talking about secondhand furniture and all that, I just wanted to mention also that my desk that I have back here is actually, I built it myself from kitchen cabinets that were left over from a construction project that someone didn't use. So building a desk yourself from like leftover materials is such a cool way to make a custom piece of furniture. So my desk stretches the whole length of my studio and it has cabinets in between for storage. So. Oh, it's always good, always good to look for those secondhand places near you where you can find material like that. That's brilliant, Sarah. Brilliant. <laughs> that's, what my, that's what my that's uh, what my sewing machines sit on too. Yeah, a kitchen countertop on top of uh, discarded kitchen cabinets. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Great idea, Colleen. Yeah. Last question for you before I move on. Your machine there, is that on a cabinet? Which machine? Oh, the scanning tech? Nope, the, your uh, 10 needle or 6 needle. Well, the 10 needle is on the, on the brother stand. Excellent. So, uh, but, I, but I will, t <laughs> the cabinet that scanning cut is on is a computer table. Oh. So it's a little computer table that was um, designed for our son to take to college. He did. Um, around. Oh, we just got so which is perfect for grabbing the tools and not having them float around. But that was just a little computer table, and they're very, very super economical to buy. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that. That's something that I have in the corner back here. I have an L-shaped desk. I've had it forever. <laughs> the thing is so old, but it has the two kind of like the computers that just roll out where you'd put 
you know, your keyboard. And that's where I put my pins, my scissors, everything, unless I'm surging so much and then they fall out. But <laughs> usually they're there. <laughs> oh, very fun. So Sarah, yeah, you have some ideas and I'll go back to Colleen here in a sec, but you have some ideas for bobbins. And I was watching so many people love the idea about the ponytails, things like that. Well, wait till you see this one from Sarah. Yeah, so this is a really quick and easy one. Um, let's see if my camera is working here. Yeah, so I love to upcycle and I love to do things the cheapest way possible. So instead of going and buying a bobbin organizer, one day I kind of just looked at an egg carton that I had laying around and realized that it was the perfect size to organize my bobbins. So that's what I've always used to organize my bobbins. And it fits really well inside of drawers too. So I have a bunch of like sets of three drawers, just like we've been looking at, you know, from craft stores and all that. And it fits perfectly. You can usually even fit two of them right next to each other. And I just spray painted these to give them like less of an egg carton look. <laughs> um, but yeah, they fit perfectly in the drawer. And then I organize them by color. So I have my black and my green. So I pull open the drawer and I can see exactly what color I need. Um, and it's also really easy to write on them. So right there, I, I wrote 90. So I know that that's my 90 weight embroidery bobbin thread. That's a great idea. I, when you showed this earlier, I was like, oh my gosh, that's something I even have in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. So I even have an extra egg carton here to show you guys. Um, I can't really zoom out anymore, unfortunately, but I need some more room. So literally all I did was just rip off the top and the cardboard ones, I definitely prefer those versus the styrofoam, although the styrofoam will work just the same. So you just rip off the top and um, that's it. And like I said, I painted mine. So this one is, I spray painted it black which makes the colors pop really nicely, but it will be hard to see a black bobbin in there. And this one, I just spray painted white. So a bit of a different look, um, but obviously you can just leave it um, carton color, standard carton color. I know a lot of cartons sometimes are blue and pink, which is really nice. So whatever you wanna use to match your sewing room, whatever makes you happy, um, you can customize it however you'd like. I love this. And then they have the clear, the clear ones that have like triple. I'm getting a lot of ideas for this. And someone just said this would be a great way to store your buttons, your extra buttons. Definitely. But yeah. That's a great they idea. Might, they might even stack. They definitely stack. Yes. There Good you point. go. <laughs> Never even thought about that. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. And there are bobbins in there, so they stack with the bobbins in there. And yeah, that's a great point, Colleen. Thank you. And if you, if you painted them with your spray paint, I think what you did was make them sturdier. Yeah. So they'll last even longer. I mean, not that they're not replaceable, but. <laughs> right. But yeah, the sturdy. Just, yeah. Yeah, if you're just putting little things in there, there's, you know, I've had one for years already and there's not much wear and tear that goes into just putting a bobbin in here. So, you know, again, the, the cardboard one works perfectly for me, um, but any one that you would want to use would be great too. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So that would kind of tie in. I was, so I'm going to show you how I store my scissors, which is kind of like the rack that you just showed, but I have scissors on top. I love this because this would actually fit, you know, those that rolling cart that you showed? Mm -hmm. I think this would fit in the rolling carts, Tina. Yeah, you're right. By the way, before I show before I show my scissors, um, I want to ask Tina, someone asked you with that iron on top, what do you do with the cord? Um, I just roll it up. It, I have to put, the iron is kind of long, so I have to put it in there diagonally, and so I just tuck the cord into one of the, the empty corner. Oh, good idea, good idea. All right, so let me see. I'm going to take you over and just show you one tip for how I store my scissors. <laughs> you can see my messy table here. This is not really organized, but I have a table where I have a bunch of stuff under here. But you know those bags. You always get them at the holidays. And they kind of cut. Of course, I have my skin cut here, too. But this bag here. So uh, 
There's a brand on it, so I'll turn it this way because it's not a brother product. But if you go shopping for any beauty supplies during the holidays, they always have like these free bags. So this is technically, I think, supposed to have hairspray, brushes, <laughs> all that stuff. So I have my pinking shears on one side. I have my pens, uh, pencils on one side, small scissors. I've got my fabric cutting scissors and rotary blades and then my itsy bitsy embroidery and snips. And then I have my paper scissors in here. And this thing, I <laughs> I hate to say it, I have four of these, and they fit perfectly on that rolling cart that you have, Tina, right on the top. And so I can roll around to my cutting table. I have three different cutting areas. And that way, I have everything here. I have one more bag that has all the weights in it, but that's too heavy to lift. And I leave it right on the top, and I don't have to worry about finding any of my scissors. So that is my one organizing tip. <laughs> I have three of those. <laughs> don't, don't you love those, Barbara? Yeah. I do. What do you What do you put in yours? Anything that the cats couldn't or shouldn't be getting to. Um, <laughs> the scissors, the pliers, the 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 um, I don't know, just anything that the cats could roll off the table goes into those. <laughs> Which, by the way, one of them is here. Oh, so. what's your cat's name? Gracie. Gracie, that somebody asked about that earlier. <laughs> no, yeah, because she was wandering by and her tail was, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Angela. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say you mentioned buttons, and I use uh, canning jars for my buttons and sort them um, by color. That's so that it's inexpensive, depending on how many you can get a smaller jar, the smaller canning jars for the if you don't have that many or if you have lots of buttons like i do <laughs> i don't know there's something about buttons uh, it, even just like going through them and sorting them it's i don't know i've done it since i was a little girl with my mom's but um yeah just put it in canning jars you can see the colors and just dump out and sort through that's a good idea the one that you want I actually use uh, my husband's fishing boxes that mm -hmm. I take from his area, <laughs> and I use that for buttons. As long as they're the same type, I'll put the buttons, rivets, jean buttons in that. I love, though, the idea because I have a lot of random ones to put them in a canning jar so I can see them because that would take too many fishing containers. <laughs> <laughs> We won't tell him. Hopefully, he's not watching the show right now. Because sometimes this this airs at we're in his office, and he'll I'll, he'll come back and he'll say, "Hmm, now I know where my stuff is." <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome! Everybody's saying, "Did anybody have any questions before we wrap this show up?" This has been so much fun. Everybody's saying, "Oh my gosh!" This people on here are giving resources for cabinets. <laughs> this has been fantastic. Yes, Facebook Marketplace is a great place. Yeah, yeah, anybody okay. renovating their kitchen, just keep your ears pe peeled and, you know, you can, how much you want for those cabinets? There you <laughs> go. I'm oh. redoing my sewing room. Oh, I agree. And I actually, that's a great idea. I use, I do that too. She puts her machine feet, extra machine feet in fishing boxes. We're going to call them crafting boxes. They're not fishing There you boxes. go. <laughs> Everybody's saying thank you. Ladies, this has been so much fun. In fact, I am floored. We have over 320 live viewers on here today, which is one of our best shows ever. I think that everybody in the sewing world is like, I need tips for January. So if you have another idea for the brother crafting and sewing family to bring you more tips, be sure to let us know in the comments. And brother, thank you for letting us take over your page to start the new year with such fun tips. Uh, Sarah, you got a lot of comments in here. They're loving your egg idea. So what was the best tip? I'm just curious for the audience. Uh, Tina, what was your best tip that you saw today? That's right. You know, honestly, cutting the vinyl sheets into the strips to keep your spools together, genius. I never even thought of that. I love that idea. I do, too. And, you know, I have those scraps all over. Usually I'm throwing them away. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Barbara, what was your favorite tip today? The vinyl strips, because years ago we used to have to buy them, and it never occurred to me to go and buy a piece and cut them myself. I mean, really. So, and I want, I want that rolly thing for my iron. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And by the way, the rolly thing, they have uh, smaller ones. Like I've got those everywhere that fits that scissor thing on it. But now they have one. I just saw it last week, a little bit bigger, uh, maybe twice the size in length. So you can actually, for those that like to do hand dyed, 
fabrics or have bigger containers that need to go down below, I think that that would work for like the buttons that we were talking about in jars. Yeah. So keep your eye out for that one too. I, well, like I have one. a lot of uh, kitty treat uh, containers or dog treat containers and I cut the top off and they go inside my little fabric baskets to hold other things. So that they'd fit on the top of that rolly thing too. <laughs> That's going to be the new word. What is a rolly thing? It's not a brother product, guys. You know how this works. <laughs> All right, Sarah, what was your favorite tip of today? I love Tina's stabilizer organizing mm -hmm. hangy thingy. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have to have a show, Tina. You're going to have to show us how to make that. I love that, too. I love yeah, that. I store mine now. They're just like all scrunched together and they get crumpled and it's not a good system. So I need something better like that. Yeah. Jane, what was your favorite tip of the day? I have a little wine area here that keeps my stable <laughs> <laughs> sorted. Um, I really like the rolly cart. You know, I'm, I'm liking that <laughs> idea of being able to just put your iron on there and all the stuff that's with it. Everybody's saying the craft cart is definitely, you know, that wine yeah. thing that you have behind you. Um, have, have any of you through the holidays gotten one of those? And mine's in the back, so I can't bring it out. But it's like a big metal thing that right. you put wine bottles in. Mm -hmm. And I never use it. And that's what I use for my stabilizer in one area of stuff that I've used. Although Tina's is a little classier. <laughs> it really works well. If you don't have the wall space, you know, to, it really works well. So, Kali, what was your favorite tip of the day? I think there might have to be a rolly cart with for an ironing stand in my future. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Everybody say yes. The rolling cart. Everybody said the, the rolly cart. It's going to be the brother rolling cart. <laughs> I see a new product line coming out. Totally. I have a pink and black one. I don't know. They come in many different colors. <laughs> we'll have to get a brother blue. Well, ladies, this has been a fantastic show. Uh, Colleen, tell your tech tech man. <laughs> Thank you for coming and saving the party so we can see your studio. And for all of you that watched today, thank you. Brother, thank you for letting us take over your page. can hardly wait for all the great projects. And if there's anything you want to learn, be sure to leave comments and we'll add it to the list. All right, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.